Hey, hey, welcome back to the channel. It's awesome that you're tuning in. So in this video, we are going to take a close look at this old school laptop. And yeah, this is really old school. I picked it up on a flea market for absolutely crazy amount of money. Three freaking euro. The previous owner told me that they didn't really use this laptop a lot. She bought it for the son, but the son basically never used it or a couple of times. And to be honest, I do believe them. So in this video, we are going to take a close look at this old school laptop. We're going to revisit some old school games and going to have a lot of fun. So this thing, I must say that I was surprised to see in what kind of condition it was. Everything is absolutely just in amazing condition. And it comes with some interesting specs, some old school specs. Here you can already see it, this thing comes with an Intel inside and Pentium 3. Around 900 megahertz to be exactly. We have some Windows Microsoft 2000 Professional installed on this, but also have a serial key for XP. So maybe in the future, we're just going to do this random update video. But for now, let's see what we're going to get with this. What do we get for 3 euro? Because this thing, yeah, it's cheap and I was thinking if it doesn't work, whatever. You know, like maybe I can use for spare parts or try to ride to fix it. But that's the question for today. Will this thing even boot up? But let's do a quick tour and let's boot up the device itself. But with a laptop of this age, yeah, we need to have the power supply because the batteries are most of the time completely dead or not working that great. But okay, so let's boot it up and let's see if the device is even working. All right, so let's take a close look at the, the device itself. Seriously, like it still runs on the original battery. And we'll give like the BIOS error, nothing to be worrying about. So let's press the F1 and let's continue and let's see that what kind of software is basically installed on this machine. Is it Windows XP or 2000? That is the question. Unfortunate, the first attempt that we tried, nothing seems to be booting up. Hmm, all right, so let's see to give this thing a reboot and let's see if we can get this thing to work. All right, let's turn it off and let's reboot it again. Okay, here you can see like this thing comes with a mobile Pentium 3 processor, 933 megahertz. Let's take a closer look into the setup just to see what happens over here. Okay, everything is messed up of course because of the time and date. It's still 1988, so oh man. Okay, primary master, there's only one drive in here and I think it's around 20 gigabytes. Over here we do have some video features, but there's nothing much that we can do over here. Let's see if the boot is still enabled. Boot time diagnostic screen. And basically we do have the option to turn this on. And let's take a close look in here. Nothing much. Same yada yada yada. Comes with 256 megabytes of RAM. <laughs> like seriously, what the hell? Oh. All right, let's see if we can boot up anything. All right, um, yeah, I think I also need to clean the screen later on. That is something I need to do. And let's see if we can even boot up in Windows now. All right, still give me the error. Press F1. And here we go. Let's see and let's go. Windows will be booted up and we do have Windows 2000 Professional. Okay, so let's take a close look at specifications list. So to begin with, this Pentium 3 can even be overclocked to 1.2 GHz. For back in the days, quite fast. So one came with 128 MB of RAM, but you can also get one 256 MB and even up of a maximum of 1 GB. So unfortunately, mine didn't came with a DVD drive or a CD drum drive, but there is an option out there. Maybe in the future I will pick it up from eBay or something if I want to, but for now it's not needed. Already noticed like we do have like USB ports in this thing, but this is 1.1. So man, that is really old school. So then mine came with a 20 gigabyte hard disk built in, but you can see if there was even a 30 gigabyte model out there. But in the end, this has some old school specs because it's a really old school laptop. So it's been booted up. So let's take a close look and let's do a deep dive into the software itself. So for me, I'm really surprised that this thing just works out of the box for this freaking three euro. People didn't really care about it and they're more like, you know what? Let's make somebody happy. And in this case, it was me. So when you're looking at it, like there were some pre-installed games, but I managed to install some games myself that we're going to play today. Just to see for fun, just how it will benchmark or play on this. Yeah, not really benchmarking, just to see how actually this old school Pentium 3 laptop can play some couple of games. Okay, well, let's see what we're going to get with the 
connections. At the front, we're going to get ourselves two types a jack, one for the headphone, and the other one is for the microphone that you want to attach to it. At the front, we're also going to get some extra keys over here. Here you have like navigating keys, one, two, three, four, and enter. Basically, these are like some extra media keys that you can configure inside the laptop. Like we all of the notebook or laptops back in the day, we do have like the right mouse click and the left mouse click over here and a very nice big touchpad that is very responsive. Okay, what I find quite interesting that the battery still holds, holds on charge, so that's pretty damn cool. Here you can see like it not will hold us for a very long time, I think it was maximum maybe like 50 minutes. We do have the indicator over here for the hard drive and that's basically what this thing does. Over here with like this tiny switch, basically when you press it or close the laptop itself, you can see it basically shuts down the display, if it works, okay. Over here we're going to get ourselves the RJ45 Ethernet connection, this is the exhaust out, then we have the option to expand, more basically I think back in the day where you have like the expansion ports where you for extra things like firewire, we do have this locking mechanism over here. Okay so on the right side what are we going to get are the freaking compartment for the battery over here and here we have like the floppy. So unfortunate like I'm guessing the previous owner did own let's say the CD-ROM drive and you can just basically push it and click it out. There's a mechanism that is very common back in the days but unfortunate yeah we don't have the CD-ROM drive. Alright so let's take a close look at the connections and there are some really old school ones. Over here what you're going to get is the PS2 connection single correctly just for the keyboard. Then we're going to get ourselves an old school serial port that we can use for example for printers I'm saying it correctly. VGA out. We even have the option for two USB ports, the old school ones. And we're going to use it for basically like adding some new files to this thing. And this was a special connection port for the let's say, docking station and of course the input for the power supply that we're going to use because this thing doesn't hold and charge for very long. Alright, so the next part is not really retro, or it is. It is like an optical mouse that we're going to use. It's an old school Microsoft, it's the Comfort Optical Mouse 3000. And basically, like, this is not like re retro. Normally, you'd have like this one with a ball inside, or a very old one made from Logitech. But this is basically the oldest one I've laying around. So let's plug it in and let's mess around with the system and let's just play some freaking games. Alright, so let's install the mouse itself. Ah, oh, Windows 2000, man, what a time it was. And let's see what we're going to get in the system. So I already pre-installed some games and let's see, I think there was the one I needed to put over there. So yeah, there were some games installed on the machine and some games are basically installed myself. So the ones that we're going to try out are over here. The ones that we're going to play is some Red Alert 2, Cartoon Fighters from Mugen, Roller Coaster Tycoon 2, or we're going to play the part of it, and Quake 3 and Doom 95, or Doom basically. Let's take a close look at these games, just see how they run on this old school laptop. Okay, we don't need the mouse with this one, but just for fun, let's play a little bit. We do have built-in speakers, so they're not super bad. But I'm missing the soundtrack. Let's make it ourselves. And then we're going to say the chicken version. And you die. Over there. Alright, so next up, let's play a little bit of single player. Time for the Quake 3 Arena. Ah, bring it on. I think I can handle that. Oh man, so the loading time, let's see how fast it is. Like I can still remember my first, I think it was on 550 megahertz. Had quite a long loaded time, the same like this. Yeah, it needs some time, but it's not extremely long. But it's kind of funny that this freaking laptop runs by Quake 3. Oh man. I'm not actually using a mouse mat, I'm using my freaking review packet to basically like use my mouse. That's not a very good option here. Alright, so let's... And I think I'm going to do some LAN parties. Like I have a couple of these old laptops and just connect them, invite some friends and just have some old school like create 3 matches. I don't know what it is with new generation games. I'm getting bored of these things like very quickly, but this old stuff, oh man. 
By the way, fun fact, like Quake 3 was basically the first game that I ever played on my Intel Pentium 550 MHz desktop PC back in the day. I think it was 2000, 1999 or 2000 or something like that. Ooh. My, yeah, what a blast to the past. And I died. But I must say, like, it's getting really hot. I can feel the heat basically here underneath, under the keyboard. So that is, <laughs> but since it's not a good thing, it's just how it is because it's an old one, an old notebook. All right, so let's try another one. Let's play a little bit of a, yeah, let's grab Reddit Alert or something like that. Oh man, loading this thing up takes sometimes quite a long time. I'm not used to waiting for loading times. Oh man, this brings back so good many memories. Like it's so much fun. Let's bring, make a match. All right, need to get used to the keyboard again. Yeah, going easy, man. Otherwise, you're going to get destroyed by him. All right, so we can choose the color. I need to be red. Oh yeah, we even have like the option to check out the game speed. How much money you can say don't use super weapons and just begin the match oh <laughs> the loading times let's check that oh yeah i can still remember like doing this on land function and loading times were so different from let's say different pcs even like the fastest one had like the lowest let's say loading times all right let's play it man it's going to be a lot of fun Oh man, the speakers in this thing are freaking awful. Oh, I still, I think it's just in the high resolution. As the monitor did support that. Oh great, our base is under attack. Holy crap. That is one, like, a really aggressive CPU already. Like, on easy mode, like, what the hell. Now I'm going to attack from that side. Let's repair this one. Oh man, I can play this every single day, you know? Like, I don't know what it is, but all those years that I played it or not played, it doesn't even matter. Like, it's so much fun, like, going back to this and just have some fun. Maybe later I'm also going to do this in network function. We have so many good games out there, but the old ones are pretty damn awesome in the end. Ooh, almost low power, two stripes. Ooh. Okay, so another thing I've played a lot is like not the cartoon fight at Mugen. I've messed around with it so much. But so man, it was such a blast playing with this. Let's see where the controls are. For the people who don't know what Mugen is, Mugen is basically an engine where you can create your own games, or better said, like implement levels, like characters you could like, download from the internet back in the days. That was so much fun. And even now, up to today, there was still development with this. And this is absolutely crazy. You can basically fight with Mario against Homer Simpson. You can think of it like it is basically like happening. Everything is absolutely over the top. Like this evil Homer is absolutely crazy if you think about it. But it's so much fun again to mess around with it, to learn a little bit of programming because that's basically what you need to do. And again, like I spent hours and hours on this. Absolutely great to see it back. And even running on Windows 2000 with a freaking Pentium 3 laptop. Another game I didn't play a lot, but I did play it sometimes, was Roller Coaster 2. Like, graphical-wise, it was not, like, super superior, but even now, it's, like, so much fun to play. Let's see what something happened. I think the previous owner did clear some games. Let's see how everything loads up. Yep, everything seems to be loading up. Oh, my, this is such, a, like, a very long time. So you can, like, delete the freaking, like, trees. <laughs> Everything is in Euro sign, kind of funny to be honest. Some of the games will not age very well. I'm not going to say this is one of them. I think like this is an absolutely great game. But take consideration, take the theme park 3D, and there were some amazing uh, theme park games like where you can build your park, write your own, I like, say, basically your attractions, so cool. But this was a uh, super easy. And your imagination was most of the things that basically like like that needs to work like that is what it is and 
And again, like it's so much fun just to mess around with it and just build your park, your attraction, like, like close it and let people have some fun. Like, you know, it's so much cool to do this. When you're looking at the graphics, oh boy, oh man, it's not the greatest. But does it spoil the fun? I think not. Your imagination will do the rest, like it was with a lot of these two games back in the day. But there is one thing I just needed to do, and that is this epic pinball game. I can still remember playing it, like you didn't own a lot of games, but I spent so many hours, and maybe you also did this too. Let's see if I can fire it up. I did start the game, but... Okay, almost tilting it over here. But this game was pretty damn good. And like when you're looking at simulation back in the day. And then there are nowadays you do have like virtual pinball machines that basically like have like in a 3D version of it now. But nothing beats this one. And again, like the animations were pretty damn good for back in the day. So believe it or not, I picked up this thing for three freaking euro. And this I think one of my best like things I basically bought when it comes to old school electronics. When I'm like hunting to thrift shops, I, I don't really search for games anymore. What I do is search for old school hardware. And this is a great example of it. I will try to collect some older hardware, including some things like mouses or gaming like peripherals from back in the day. But that's going to be like a bigger challenge. So let me know what kind of games did you play back in the day, did you own like a PC or do you still own a PC that plays these old school games? But well, thank you for watching, consider subscribing, hit that little bell, become on the Wicked family and it will be great to see you in another video.